Welcome, Wargamers, to the hedonistic horrors of the world of tomorrow, because today we're talking about the Raider Gangs in Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Now, when I say Raider Gangs, it's important to make a distinction right up top. Um, right as this video is coming out, uh, Modifius, which is the makers of Wasteland Warfare, uh, have their core Raider Gangs, which is the ones that we kind of know from Fallout 4, Fallout 3, that kind of stuff, just the general enemies. But then there's also the Raider Gangs specifically that are themed from Nuka World, the expansion for Fallout 4. I'm not going to be talking about those. Those are kind of like flavored modifications on the core Raiders. They have their own balancing things, their own narrative, uh, and they really are kind of their own veins of Raiders. Instead, I'm going to be focusing simply on the core Raider faction. Now, these Raiders, of course, are the ones who survived the nuclear apocalypse, but they did so through blunt force, murder, and excessive chem use. Now, while they're not a truly unified faction, they do collectively pose a huge threat to any tribe, town, vault, or anything that wants to rebuild civilization around the world. And this is also one of the broadest factions in the game, because from Modifius, they have all the raider gangs, like I said, from Nuka World. Um, there's also ones that are specific with hero characters from the Capital Wasteland, the Commonwealth, Appalachia, and so on. And so today we're going to talk about the background, how they play in Fallout Wasteland Warfare, and give you a few pointers on list building. Now one thing I'd like to add here up top, if you're interested in anything Fallout Wasteland Warfare, please consider using my Modifius link in my link tree down below. You'll see exactly how much money you save every single time you use that link or that code that comes with it. And uh, every time you do, at no cost to you, a tip goes in my tip jar because Modifius is very generous to content creators like me. And so uh, it goes directly to supporting me, my wife, our cats, the whole channel, and I could not be more thankful for each and every one of you. Now, for those of you who are new to Fallout, and many of you are because of the awesome Amazon show, Raiders represent the general enemies of human, or human enemies, I guess that you would find in the world throughout the Fallout game. These are just bands of humans that have huddled together and it will do whatever it takes to survive. And they kind of range on a spectrum of morality. Some of them have a lot of rules and a lot of order. Others act as mercenary companies, while some still have just let themselves fall into hedonism and, and all these kinds of like butchery. They appeared in the first Fallout game and have just been a staple of the series uh, in every single game with their crude, you know, makeshift weapons, scavenged armor, lack of organization, and general ability to just kind of foil everyone's plan. Now you might want them in your Fallout Wasteland Warfare collection for a few reasons. Like me, I enjoy playing the Raiders. I think they're super fun on the tabletop and I, I kind of like their play style. But also if you wanted to have them as sort of the general enemy for when you're running your solo or co-op games, they make a fantastic enemy. One, because the models and the sculpts are just so unique, but two, because it feels like you're playing a Fallout game when you walk into an area to explore it and a bunch of Raiders descend on you. So how do we go about representing the Raiders on the table? Again, you, you might notice from the video game, specifically uh, 3 and 4, and now Fallout 76 as well, that there's different kind of, of Raiders names. For example, in this game, there's a basic Raider, there's the Psycho, uh, the Scaver, the Veteran, that kind of stuff. What we're going to do now is talk about the individual unit types that exist for the core Raiders uh, and how they exist in Fallout Wasteland Warfare. At a super high level, what I tell people about this is that it is a faction of quantity as a quality all its own. They're not the cheapest troops that you can get. You can get larger horde armies, especially if you start using creatures and stuff like that. But as far as human factions go, in terms of how many you can field, there are skill sets on the tabletop. Everyone's generally good at one thing, uh, which kind of sets them apart. A lot of other factions have multiple uses and multiple things they're pretty good at. Raiders, you're going to pick the raider you need for that job, and they only do that one thing. But they're cheap at it, and they're good relative to their cheapness. So let's go one by one and take a look at the entries. One thing I do actually want to put up here at the top, and I have it written down here in my notes, is each one of these things, there's a, a different variant of them. So you'll see like Raider and Raider Outlaw, Scalver, Scaver Outlaw, Psycho, Psycho Outlaw, and so on. The Outlaw moniker in, in Fallout Wasteland Warfare really just exists if you wanted to purchase a unit that had more skills. So in Wasteland Warfare, you can only use abilities that you have like the little skill icon for on their sheet. And if you wanted to do like a longer form campaign, the Outlaw versions of these things cost like two or three points more but they give you that more utility. So they're kind of better for that style of play. I don't typically take any of the outlaw stuff in my games, um, but I would if I was playing them in a campaign format. 
So that's all. It's just a few more skills at a premium point cost to kind of round out your roster a little bit so you don't miss out on anything. So we'll kick it off with Psychos, which are my favorite. Psychos are your melee monsters. They start at 40 points and have a base melee stat of seven because it keys off of their agility, which is fantastic. And these little dudes can hustle. They have a red move and a charge of green. And if you combine that with something like say, a quick move action from say, Jet, they are missile. Because what you can do is activate them, have them take the Jet, and they get a, uh, I can't remember the name of it, reaction token or something like that, but they can make a quick move reaction forward, slightly you know, less distance than they normally would, but it's extra movement. And so you can like yeet these guys across the board very, very quickly. Their outlaw version is great. If you want to do that same you know trick of rocketing up the field, but going for an objective because they have quick action expertise and a few more utility abilities like lock picking, hacking, whatever but they trade that for one agility, which means they're a little bit less of the, the melee beast, but they have a few more skills. Now, up until the Nuka World expansion, I think it was, they had this rule where if you put armor on them, it makes them worse at moving. They've kind of done away with that in an FAQ or update, but I just, I absolutely love these. For me in my list, I have two psychos. They're each equipped with a lead pipe and jet. And the idea is usually turn two, what I'll do is that thing I mentioned, take the jet, quick move action, uh, and then charge and then attack. And that complete range and attack uh, is an immense amount of the board. And I look at them as being completely disposable. I can use them to rocket someone to the back line if they're unprotected, like I did in one game at Adepticon. I, I was able to throw them all the way upfield into a sniper for the NCR, uh, which tied up a shooting. And then uh, for other games, I just use them as disposable distractions or, you know, just stuff to hunt out heroes. They just have the speed and mobility to get anywhere. They also important to note that they actually pass their first uh, obstacle test. So like they can climb over terrain. So yes, they're supposedly like less heavily armored, but the idea is that they can use the environment as their armor and their speed. So if psychos are your melee missiles, Scavers, our next subject here, are going to be your shooting and hunting master because their best skill is perception, again at seven, with both rifles and pistols, and there's no restrictions on armor whatsoever. My lists always contain at least two scavers. I really love the double barrel shotgun. It's not the best weapon. Um, I've had a great success with the assault rifle with these guys, but the double barrel shotgun is so much fun because it can cripple enemies, um, damage a limb. And so when you combine just the sheer amount of damage it can cause, the fact that he's unlikely to miss unless you roll like really terribly, uh, it's a brutal, it's a brutal unit and I absolutely adore it. But realistically, he's just like the psycho in that he has one skill uh, or one attribute that dominates the others. In his case, it's perception and the weapon skills that follow that are really what you want to lean into. Now our next one here is the basic raider. And the raider is interesting because he's dirt cheap. You know, you can just give him like a pipe pistol or something like that. And it's not that he's fantastic at any one thing. It's that you can use these guys to get on objectives, to hold places of the board, to support other heroes, and you can give them some pretty good guns. You know, if your psychos are your melee scalpels and your scavers are your ranged, you know, scalpels for picking a target and getting rid of it, the raiders really act as kind of a an ancillary force that adds some weight of fire to those things. They can get into melee. They're okay. They're not great. Same thing with shooting, to be honest with you. Uh, but when you start having multiples doubling up with a scaver, you know, to uh, the weight of fire all of a sudden becomes its own force on the battlefield. Plus, I will say, if you're looking at playing any of the named characters in um, Raiders specifically, they oftentimes have force multipliers that work exceptionally well on Raiders, like the base base Raider. Um, and by that, I mean, one example is like Akak. -Ak. Uh, it's from, I think that one's Fallout 3, if I'm not mistaken. But basically she has a minigun. And when she activates, anyone who fires at the same time as her gets like a plus two to their shooting and stuff. So again, it's the weight of fire that is coming down real hard on people. And because of their cheapness, you're, you're not paying for the high skill set, but you're paying for a body that can be manipulated by other abilities. Lastly is the Raider Veteran, and it has the best skill set because of course it's the boss. Looking at the stats, we can see they have access to rifles and pistols, but the real money makers are at the heavy guns and melee stats. This is 
the best heavy weapon stat of the generic raider units. In addition to all those awesome stat lines, they have a rule called Meat Shield. Once per battle, someone near them can take a shot on their behalf, which is super fun. So again, more value for your basic raider types. You don't want to throw that bullet into someone useful like a psycho or a scaver. Having a raider nearby even just to act as a meat shield is a great idea. They also have access to a rule called bushcraft, which means uh, in, in some versions of the game you can find food items or buy food items. And they have two versions, a cooked and a non-cooked version. You always treat it as being the cooked version, which usually just means less rads, more health, a higher bonus to any items you normally take. And veterans work exceptionally well in power armor. It's important to note that when you buy the core raider box, and then there's that other box for the forge, which I kind of put those two together. They're, they kind of act like two sides of the same coin. Um, the bosses tend to come in power armor, but you don't have to take them. They're great without it. Uh, but in power armor, what's awesome is you get a little uh, strength boost and it takes you up to strength, I believe it's eight. And you get an extra black die if you're strength eight or higher when you start doing melee attacks. So if you, uh, I give my raider veteran power armor and a shish kebab. And so he's all of a sudden going in like a can opener and just tearing things apart. Now I'd like to move into how do we put this together into a force? I've kind of alluded to my, uh, my army as I talked about my all comers raider list. And so just to put it up on the screen here and go through it really, really quickly, it's two psychos with lead pipes and jet. As I had mentioned, I have my Raider boss in power armor with an assault rifle and a shish kebab, two scavers, one with, uh, well, initially at Adepticon, I had them both with Del Bell shotguns, but since then I've switched one to an assault rifle. And lastly, just a basic Raider with a pipe. I adore this setup. Six models at 500 caps is awesome to me. Um, I have a few different threats on the board, right? And that, that all have to be dealt with in different ways. One type of threat is the psychos being able to go melee missile and hog wild. Another kind of threat is the scavers who can walk up and just, again, at point blank range with the Del Bell shotgun, ruin someone's unit who is really, really good by crippling them. And that's happened multiple times in my games. Um, sometimes it takes both of them firing at the same target to do it, but like, how many shots do you have to throw before you cripple someone's systems up so um that's amazing the raider boss in power armor is its own monster i mean it's not super good at shooting the assault rifles there are more of a point filler but uh with the shish kebab and the strength bonus and that stuff like it's just a unit you pay for ignoring right like the psychos are in your face that's wave one the raider boss comes in second and all the while in the background you're being hailed by bullets uh, by the scavers and the raider himself, the little lowly raider who's doing nothing, he's just running around getting objectives. That's all he has to do. And then if he happens to be getting an objective that's near an enemy, he'll throw a couple shots in there to add some weight of dice, but that's, it's pretty much good at taking on anything except a bigger horde than itself. For example, I played a game against, uh, it was like a, a creature army of Myrolurks, and then them with the little spawns that they can do that can flood the board with too many bodies for the raiders to be able to handle that's the other cheap army i was talking about but that's like an extreme outlier now one thing i do want to touch on when it comes to playing as the raiders is their faction ability and essentially the way this works is when you take chems in fallout wasteland warfare there's a little card that you put next to your guys' stack card and it gives you bonuses and it kind of has a degrading bonus thing so the first round you get um, three bonuses the second round you get two you get one and then you have to see if you suffer from withdrawal effects the special ability for raiders is that they get to stay in that last turn of their drug you know whatever use uh, for an extra round so what that means practically speaking is that me as a player if I just take my chems at least round two I don't really realistically have to worry about ever having any withdrawal effects. I get to just ride the bonuses the entire battle. Um, they're still diminishing. It doesn't like keep everything going for an extra turn. It just means I'm not gonna have to worry about the negative side of stuff, which to be honest, I really do. That said, I do not think it's a smart idea uh, to build your list all around chem use because I think that's a trap. It's meant to be a minor thing to kind of be like, hey, raiders like chems not like a, a thing that bends your whole game strategy. Now, as far as collecting raiders go, there's really just two boxes that I would point you to, and then as many character options as you wanted to fill in there. But the two really that I wanna point you to are the core raider box and the psycho scaver expansion here. 
honorable mention to the Forged because they have a bunch of really cool sculpts in there, but I don't feel like the Forged are as fleshed out as some of the other factions. In the but yeah, with those two to three boxes, you'll have everything you need to fill out whatever kind of army you want to make. Don't forget, you can kit out different kinds of robots to be raider versions of themselves, uh, as well as take advantage of like, you know, different models you can kit bash to be your own unique raider variants. All in all, it's the faction that got me into the game uh, because I was so excited for some of the models that I was seeing. So let's wrap up this video like I end all of them by talking about why is this cool? At the end of the day, I love the Raiders in Wasteland Warfare because they play exactly like they should. And that's such a rarity in wargaming that I think it deserves mention of just when you encounter Raiders playing the video game version of Fallout um, and then you translate that to the tabletop, it's so easy to make them like knock over chumps that don't pose a threat. These guys are exceptionally dangerous, but they're only dangerous in one avenue per person barring the boss. It takes a little bit of like getting used to what everyone's strengths and weaknesses are to be able to play them well, but even if you're just playing against them and using them as like an AI force, they're visually interesting. They play like they would in the video game of just swarms coming at you. It just seems like an immense amount of fun and the way that they operate on the tabletop is the way you expect them to. They want to swarm and chip away at their opponents while the bosses and the heavy hitters come in for those killing blows. What that killing blow is can look like a lot of different things, which is why the faction is fun, right? Like for me, that killing blow is the shish kebab power armor boss coming in and just wrecking somebody's day. It could just as easily be Akak -ak unloading a whole bunch of minigun fire into a singular ta target once per round. It could be psychos with a super sledge if you want it. I mean, that's nuts, but I love it. Anyway, friends, that's it for me when it comes to starting and understanding why the Psychos are awesome. Uh, if you have any questions about the faction, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer them then, uh, and I will look forward to hanging out with you there. Thank you so much for watching, and happy wargaming.